Okay, uh, thank you. It's a, it's a real pleasure uh, to be here and to uh, honor uh, Lev Gorkov. Um, I think I only uh, met him once. I mostly know him through his work, uh, but I thought I'd give a shout out to a uh, paper of his that I particularly like. I was uh, reviewing uh, his uh, work um, um, you know, before the conference and, and seeing a wonderful uh, set of uh, papers. Um, this one I like a lot because um, I teach this stuff. Usually in the spring, I'm teaching uh, condensed matter uh, quarter three, and I teach four weeks of superconductivity. And uh, we spend a couple weeks on the phenomenology, and then we go to the BCS theory. And then the, one of the highlights is when you connect these two different points of view. And this is the paper um, that does that. Uh, microscopic derivation of the Ginzburg-Landau equations in the theory of superconductivity. And this is where uh, he gets the, uh, the fact that it's, uh, the charge is twice the electronic charge, right? And um, so it really puts things together. And uh, then the, the one other reason why I like this paper is uh, the date, the publication date is December 1959, and that's the month and year I was born. Okay, so I, I want to talk about a uh, uh, set of numerical calculations with uh, um, a number of methods for the, the Hubbard model, uh, and uh, mostly we find striped ground states in the Hubbard model. Um, so there's the Hubbard model um, where we're just, for the most part, considering just nearest neighbor hopping T, and not a, for most of it, not a very broad range of parameters, uh, but... Uh, um, let's see, I want to, uh, I'll skip mostly the, the intro to the Hubbard model, but I want to talk about these four powerful simulation methods that we've um, sort of combined forces with uh, to try to get some more definite conclusions than we can usually get with just uh, one method. Um, in particular, to uh, really get some definite conclusions, we zeroed in on a particular uh, point uh, in this, the, the phase diagram, u equals eight and one eighth doping, um, certainly a key point for understanding uh, the coup rates, uh, also a point where you're most likely to get stripes, which is indeed what we find, but that wasn't clear that that was going to happen at the start. Uh, so we get a consensus on the phase of the ground state, and uh, um, we find, found something surprising, which is uh, the filling of the stripes was uh, uh, not not what we expected. It turns out that they're very nearly degenerate over a range of, uh, of uh, densities along the stripe. And um, then um, more recently, um, we've gotten some additional results on the pairing uh, results. Uh, this is more specific to DMRG, and I'm gonna show some of that. <clears throat> okay, so this uh, work started with uh, uh, an effort by the Simons collaboration on the many electron problem to try to organize the status of numerical simulations on the Hubbard model, which were sort of confusing, disordered view. And um, uh, so what, what uh, a paper that, that uh, resulted was uh, sen uh, essentially uh, just about every type of numerical simulation that did a decent job on the Hubbard model was sort of brought together to see um, where they agree, where they disagreed, and uh, to see where the uh, um, uh, sort of remaining areas for work was most important. And uh, for much of the phase space of the model, there was uh, pretty good agreement from a variety of methods, but for parameters relevant to the cuprates, um, which are the toughest to simulate, the methods disagreed on the nature of the ground state. And, uh, there, a little circle appeared. <clears throat> okay, so this is this region right here um, at uh, zero temperature. Um, there's a few methods here that are, we're not doing so well. This is just looking at the energy, which is sort of the first thing you can compare, compare to see if things are doing well. But there's this cluster of methods down here um, that we're not entirely agreeing. Um, and we, within that, we took uh, four methods that really seem to be uh, doing nicely and try to resolve the, the differences. And that resulted in uh, this paper. Um, and uh, so this just appeared in science. This, the four methods were DMRG, 
each of these methods has a weakness um, that is difficult to control within that method. So the weakness with DMRG is that you, you're working on a finite cylinder and there's a limited set of system sizes and so you don't know what happens on larger cylinders. Um, there's density matrix embedding theory, which is a little bit like dynamical mean field theory, but more with sort of a um, uh, DMRG Schmidt decomposition sort of approach to the, the cluster. This has a weakness in that there's a, a cluster that uh, has a limited size. Okay, there's the infinite projected entangled pair states, or IPEPs. And uh, this has, uh, works directly in the infinite system, but it has a parameter that controls the accuracy of the wave function, a bond dimension, and that requires some extrapolation. And finally, there's a, a particular type of Monte Carlo with a particular um, way of, of controlling the minus sign problem, a constraint based on a trial wave function, which turns out to work quite nicely and that's the CPMC method, okay? And so a key aspect of this with, is that these weaknesses or sources of uncontrolled errors are very different, and uh, so we felt that if all of these methods could agree, we'd have high confidence that we had the right answer. Okay. And we focused on this one point in the phase diagram because it was uh, a way to, to sort of work hard enough to really resolve things. Um, we'd like to do the whole phase diagram um, and, uh, and we're working on that, but it was sort of important to fo focus initially. So uh, the energies that we find uh, for these four different methods have a range of, of answers. There are error bars here, but the error bars you shouldn't pay too much attention to because those are the easy error bars. Those are not, so for instance in DMRG there's well-controlled extrapolations in the truncation error but there's also just the width of the cylinder, which we don't really have a good way of, of setting error bars to. And so the, these are the easy error bars. Um, the, the, the only way we sort of have control on the, on the uncontrolled error bars is, is by comparing with these different methods. And so we get a range of energies, and this range of energies after working on these methods a lot um, is about an order of magnitude better than it was in the previous paper. Okay. And of course, everything's much easier at half filling. Okay, so the first key question is uh, uniform states versus uh, striped ground states. And um, in some methods, you just get what you get. In other methods, you have some control. So in two of the methods, there's a control that we can force a uniform state. Uh, this DMET and IPEPs both can be forced by using a, a plaquette that's small enough that it uh, doesn't allow any uh, uh, striped uh, patterns to form. And uh, so in those methods, we find we can compare the energy of the lowest energy states, which are these vertical stripes, and the uniform states, and find that they are uh, higher in energy by a significant amount. Um, here's also a diagonal stripe, um, which is a metastable state in the IPEPS method, um, but it's higher in energy by an amount that's significant compared to the other errors. The DMRG always gives stripes. You can't form a uniform state out of it, at least in ways that we've tried. Uh, the Monte Carlo also gives uh, stripes as the lowest energy. Okay. Um, both methods um, when you force the uniform state, they give nice D-wave uh, pairing. Okay, so uh, uh, Philippe Corbeau's IPEPS has gotten a lot of deserved attention. Um, during the course of these calculations, he made a significant improvement in the method. So when you look at these IPEPS calculations, you should pay attention to sort of when they were done and whether there was um, the nice new energy extrapolation method. So this shows his results with the, it's, it's similar data, but it's a way of analyzing it and uh, being able to extrapolate. So these open symbols here, first of all, this is looking at uniform versus diagonal stripes versus vertical stripes. And if you look at this older data, it's fine data, but it's very difficult to extrapolate. And with this new way of sort of analyzing an appropriate error measure, um, it follows these curves here, which 
uh, can be extrapolated with a polynomial very nicely. And with that, you see that the uh, vertical stripes are the lowest in energy, and um, also plotted are results from the other methods sh showing that this is now agreeing with the other methods with this extrapolation. Over on the right, we have um, vertical stripes with different fillings and spacings, and I'm gonna talk more about that. And uh, here, they're coming in much more closely, but again, you see the new method of extrapolation is much better. Okay, so the vertical stripes have, uh, we're working mostly at just a filling of one-eighth, or a doping of one-eighth. And um, so if there's a stripe state, the sort of traditional thing that uh, you talk about is this filled stripe state, and if it's at one-eighth doping, then the uh, distance between the stripes is eight. Um, the magnetic wavelength is twice the wavelength, the charge wavelength, so lambda is the charge wavelength. And so we'd say this has filling one, but the half-filled stripes um, have just half the density along a stripe, and uh, keeping the filling constant, uh, they have uh, half the wavelength. So this is lambda equals four. Okay. <coughs> so this takes place in the charge stripes or the filled stripes? Well, they always come together. You know, it comes, it, what? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, we had seen these stripe states in the TJ model, and uh, this is work that uh, uh, was with uh, Doug over uh, a number of years, and uh, in that time I made movies showing how the stripe states arose in the DMRG calculations. These were all in the TJ model, which was uh, easier to do, and you can see in these movies that the stripes just sort of spontaneously uh, form. And these stripes that we saw in the TJ model were, were almost always half-filled stripes, and certainly at this doping. Okay. Um, filled stripes had been found with Hartree Fock. That was the first thing that was uh, just found uh, theoretically in Hartree Fock calculations, which, um, which are uh, not, not necessarily too reliable. Okay. So uh, here are the results for the four different simulation techniques um, for the energy of the states um, versus this uh, charge wavelength. So here at eight is the filled stripes, and four, which is up higher in energy, is the half-filled stripes. So this is different from the TJ model, um, where we were saying that this would have been the favored uh, state. But uh, what's more surprising, perhaps, is this very close near degeneracy. So each of the four methods has uh, subtracted so that they all agree uh, artificially at uh, the filled stripe. Um, but then they're all very close to being degenerate for a certain range um, up to about lambda or down to about lambda equals five, and then they, they, they go up. Um, Okay, and so this uh, near degeneracy, um, if you wanna think about what this means for a realistic system, this would suggest that uh, disordered stripes or fluctuating stripes are, are sort of much more likely than you, you might think. Okay, so I wanna give some uh, new results on um, uh, pairing in, uh, in these cylinders, and this is uh, work that uh, so far, I just have uh, DMRG results to show. One of the things that we found in these comparisons, um, you know, at first we went into this thinking that a width four cylinder is uh, very narrow, and uh, we weren't sure how to trust that with DMRG, but we found that it actually tended to agree rather well with the wider cylinders, including wider ones done by the other methods. Okay, so we're looking now and pairing is a little bit more difficult, so although we can do some of these calculations on width six, we have more accuracy on width four, and so that's um, what I'm showing here. Okay, so the, the uh, top uh, curve here is showing um, mostly just one big simulation on a very long cylinder, and um, the cylinder has a uh, chemical potential that's varied along the length of the system. It also is in the grand canonical ensemble, so the number of particles uh, can fluctuate. 
Okay? And the top panel is showing the density. So if you want to see a stripe, well, it's not hu varying hugely, but a stripe is essentially uh, uh, the, the bottom of each, uh, it's, it's a trough here would be a stripe. Um, along with these calculations, were, uh, are shown a, a set of calculations, a, a big set of calculations that were on a shorter uh, cylinder, 16 by 4, and the numbers here indicate the number of holes per, um, per stripe. So here we, in this width 4 system, the 4 would indicate a filled stripe. So over here at this higher hole filling, we have filled stripes, and then over here we go into a regime with half-filled stripes. Okay. And as we, as, so with this chemical potential shifting along the cylinder, you just sort of slowly progress in the filling, uh, in the, the overall density. And you have this sort of transition where it goes mostly from filled stripes to half-filled stripes. Um, the system can't, on this width 4 cylinder, it can't really, it doesn't want to do three holes. It would rather do two or four just because um, it wants an even number of, of holes. And this, it, it sort of definitely tells that. You just don't see three whole objects. Um, so below it is uh, shown the pairing response to uh, this system. And it's got two curves, which is the, the pairing along x links versus y links. And the fact that they're mirror images opposite sign shows that it's uh, D wave pairing. And you have this big peak um, right at the transition between the filled stripes and the half-filled stripes. Okay, so it's, uh, uh, it's you know, asymmetrical. It gives a surprisingly uh, non-negligible <laughs> result over in this filled stripe section. Uh, but the, I think the most significant thing is, is the sort of big response you get um, right at the boundary between the half-filled and filled stripes. Okay, uh, oh, I should mention that this is work uh, done by Chao Min Chung my former postdoc. Okay, uh, over on the right is a set of calculations on these size cylinders. And these all are in the Grand Canon Ensemble with a uniform proximity effect pairing field put over the whole system, uh, not too large. And uh, we look at the density as a function of the chemical potential. Here, the chemical potential is uniform across each system. And then here is the pairing response and averaged over the middle of each uh, cylinder. And uh, so this is both versus chemical potential. If you replot it versus the density, just combining those two, then you get this nice superconducting dome, the pairing response peaking at uh, somewhere around 0.85 uh, or so. Okay. okay, we also looked at um, the pairing when you're just trying to look at a single stripe. And uh, so the trouble with the, the stripes on the previous things was that they were wrapping around the cylinder, and so they had two or four holes. They weren't a long stripe. Uh, we're limited in, it. we can't just do a huge system, but we can do long systems. So here's a stripe that's constructed to uh, run lengthways, lengthwise along the, the, the cylinder. So this, to make this stable, we had to do some artificial things. So we put on a chemical potential to keep the holes mostly off the bottom leg here. Um, and it's sort of then it's symmetrical because it's a cylinder. And then we turn, we increased the uh, hopping in the X direction. And that stabilized um, this sort of lengthwise stripe. Okay, and then we did it with the grand canonical ensemble and put a um, pairing field along the left edge. And we look at the response of the pairing along the stripe. Okay, so the first one is for uh, essentially a filled stripe. And uh, you see a response just where you put the pairing field, but then it decays and it gets uh, fairly small. And the, the, this is now the hole density along the length of the system as shown there. Okay, when you um, change the chemical potential to favor half-filled stripes, then you see a substantial CDW along the stripe. Um, so this is sort of showing um, um, it's, it's still one stripe, but it's sort of grouped together into pairs, uh, into three different pairs. And again, the uh, pairing is, it's not going fully to zero, but it's fairly weak. Okay. 
Um, so if you look at the magnitudes of these pairing responses and compare it to our peak over here, it's actually uh, less. Um, this is with a potential, with a pairing potential on the whole system. So this is the largest. This is not so small compared to this. And these are, uh, these are smaller by, say, about a factor of five. So it's telling something that, uh, that surprised me a little bit, which is, um, you know, if you have one stripe, you think of it, you know, uh, as, as a linear superconductor and uh, maybe Josephson coupled to other stripes. But, but no, there's, it's not giving us nearly the response that you might think. It's actually fairly weak. And um, I think this makes um, some sense. Um, if you think of this sort of 1D picture of a stripe that's trying to be superconducting, not only are the pairs sort of hardcore, but they also don't want to get too far away from each other. Because if you two put, take two near neighbor um, pairs and pull them apart, the antiferromagnetic uh, domain wall is naked in between. And so it'll cause a rise in energy. So it's sort of a 1D system that's really strongly constrained not to be able to fluctuate its density very much, which is really at the heart of pairing. Okay? And so if you look then back at this guy, this guy is where you're at this boundary. So this is really sort of more associated with fluctuations between stripes. And uh, so it's suggesting, OK, we really need to pay attention to this sort of strong fluctuation between stripes. It's, um, it's a lot of interpretation for some small systems, but uh, that's what it uh, uh, tells me. And it, it uh, also suggests that, so these, are, these, these the stripes here are not really strongly fluctuating. It's sort of um, just got this sort of change in the stripes. So it's, it suggests that uh, um, disordered stripes could sh show this sort of stronger pairing effect, and it doesn't need to have um, uh, fluctuations of the stripes. OK. OK, so uh, to conclude, uh, we think we're closing in on solutions to Hubbard models with uh, numerical simulations. I should say that you know, this was just the Hubbard model without extra parameters, without trying to fit the T primes to uh, DFT. Um, it's, uh, it's limited in that way, and we need to explore the broader phase diagram. But um, at least if we pick, pick a particular point and work hard, we can do a pretty good job on uh, solving these systems. Um, with the four different methods, um, we think we've converged to a consistent general picture of this covered ground state near U equals A to near 1 8 filling. And it, uh, the system exhibits D-wave pairing, but intertwined with stripes. Is, uh, is intertwined still OK to use, or is that passe? Uh, <laughs> um, but the biggest response occurs at this transition between stripe fillings. OK, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. OK, let's start with Steve. Stripes versus checkerboards, or that is to say, unidirectional versus bidirectional. Yeah, we ways. have just don't see those. You don't see any bidirectional density right. ways. Is right. is that's not because of the constraint of your uh, geometries? That's that's a, I mean, it's it's is it that you don't see it or that you don't <laughs> see it? <laughs> right. Well, if you if you look across the four different methods, um, you know, with our small cylinders, you might be worried more about constraints of the geometry. If you look at how things arise, for instance, in the um, quantum Monte Carlo, there they can do with, say, eight systems. And um, they start with a, something that's totally unbiased. And then they actually build in some mean field density stuff to improve the trial state. But, but you know, they start unbiased, so it can do whatever it wants. So I think if you look across the whole thing, I think we sort of just don't see those in a reliable way. We don't. We do see stripes always arising, and we these other things. You know, I don't know if everyone has really tried to push, say, the checkerboard pattern, but I think we would have seen it if it was wanting to be there. Steve, could you give us the energies again? I noticed some of the figures. It's 0 0.01 yeah. t. Now, is is that? Per Let's see, the first site or per hole or 
Yeah, this is per site. Per site. The units of hopping with t equaled one. Okay. And uh, so here's sort of this uncertainty of uh, about, say, 5 times 10 to the minus uh, 3. And that's uh, per site. Per site. And so if we made it per hole. Uh, yeah. We're okay. Uh, sorry, that's per site compared right. with the hopping T. So that, that's quite a small energy. It's a pretty small energy. We're talking about, uh, you know, well under TC. So we think we're resolving. It's a little bit. Um, a little bit unclear exactly how to account for the energy, um, but it's it's a fairly small energy. We think we're, you know, smaller than a lot of the other things that we're interested in. Why do you think there's this degeneracy you almost find? What, yeah. What physics uh, is that? That that's a good question. Um, you know, if you look at these stripes and they're you have the same overall density and and if you pull them out of each stripe that pushes the stripes together, well, the stripes push on each other. They repel each other. So that energy is somehow matching the energy within uh, the stripes. But why is it so close? That's, uh, that's uh, I don't know. Um, one question. Um, I've always assumed that uh, four-leg uh, cylinders are pathological because if you look at them from the you know, uh, transverse direction, you have two by two plaquettes, right? And pairs can form uh, on uh, along the rung, right? So what am I missing here? In yeah, so that was that was what we felt, uh, and that was consistent with the um, uh, TJ results on the four-leg ladders, where we would see. If you want to call it a stripe, you'd say it was a half-filled stripe, which is the same as a pair. But then on the Hubbard model, we started seeing filled stripes. And then it's not, it doesn't make nearly so much sense to think of it as, uh, as you know, just this pair sitting on a plaquette. So it just seems to make more sense in this comparing with the wider systems which we have access to.